Gentleman Simon's expired chair now recognize Ms. Lee from Pennsylvania for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This country is riddled with division and inequity that are entrenched in our policies, laws, and institutions. These entrenched disparities leave so many of us out, out of the conversation, out of opportunity, and out of the room where the fate of our communities are decided. Before uh, my Republican colleagues get triggered by the word equity, I want to remind them that this conversation is about many of the things they claim to support. The power of local voices, the inclusion of rural communities, and the well-being of people in their districts as well as mine. Members of underserved communities, many of whom have endured generations of discrimination and disinvestment, still confront significant barriers to realizing the full uh, promise of America. Black and brown people, uh, indigenous people, LGBTQIA people, uh, disabled people, and others are so often forgotten or intentionally left behind. The federal government has a responsibility and a duty to make every effort to remove these barriers, and they must take a whole of government approach to do so. Administrator uh, Carnahan, I wanna ask you a few questions about some of the initiatives GSA uh, is focusing on to advance equity. How does GSA's uh, Good Neighbor Program support local community goals, economic recovery, and environmental justice? Yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, I'm really proud of the Good Neighbor Program. It's something that it, you, you would expect the government, the federal government to do this all the time, but historically has, it has not always happened. And so it really is about, I think, intentionality, about figuring out how we can be positive drivers in communities. There's been a long history of federal government taking activity that's divided communities, whether it's in transportation access or highways going through neighborhoods. But we know that the part that we play, which is citing decisions uh, that impact communities, ought to be done talking to communities. They're the ones who know what they need and where they can make urban planning decisions that can transform neighborhoods. So that's what we do. Um, I will say that in one area in particular that um, uh, we're focused on is in the tribal land. Mm -hmm. um, we got a significant amount of money in the bipartisan infrastructure law to invest in uh, border crossings at the northern and southern borders. Uh, some of that goes through tribal lands. And so to make sure that we are dealing with those nation-to-nation -nation relationships in ways that are appropriate but also get good value for taxpayers. Thank you so much. And so GSA expanded this program significantly in 2022, correct? Yes. Awesome. How else is GSA ensuring its public building footprints is contributing to the pros uh, prosperity and environmental justice of local communities? Well, as I, as I mentioned, uh, we, we, we were very serious about siting decisions that we make. I mentioned earlier today that in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, for example, uh, your home state, yes. there was a new courthouse that was put up. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was in collaboration with that community that the area of town was decided on because yeah. it was an area that hadn't been always invested in and now is gonna be an economic anchor in that part of the community. And so that's how we can make a big difference as the federal government. We use our power both in buying things but also placing assets to help communities grow. Thank you. GSA is also conducting a first of its kind evaluation to, ex to assess the effectiveness of equity efforts across American Rescue Plan programs. Uh, Administrator, has this evaluation provided any insight so far and how will its findings be used to improve other programs? So uh, I think there was a reference earlier to that evaluation, and I'm just not familiar with okay. it, but I will find out Thank and you. circle back with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, one of the many pro uh, problems facing so many of these marginalized and underserved communities is the inequities in technology design and delivery. Uh, this means that those who, must, who most need government services will often have the most difficulty access, uh, accessing them. GSA has indicated that improving this is a priority to better serve our communities. Um, how is GSA implementing this priority, and how is it making a difference for constituents in districts like mine? Yeah, thanks so much for that question. You know, that this, is a, this is a thing that's really important. Like, government doesn't get to choose its customers, right? It's our job to serve everyone which means not only do we need to focus on security and privacy and ease of access, but also accessibility yeah. and to ensure we get that right. There's a particular thing that we've done at GSA to create shared services so other government agencies can do this relatively easily because we've helped pave the way. It's a thing called the US Web Design System, which essentially, think about it like a, if, if you're gonna set up a website for the government, uh, you can go to Think of it like a hardware store that has all the bits and pieces that you would need to create a website, 
but it ensures that it's accessible for everyone. And so that's the kind of thing that we're trying to focus on when it comes to shared services, and it gives better service to everybody. Thank you. I can't overemphasize how critical it is that GSA and all federal agencies continue to advance equity in everything they do. Uh, Administrator Carnahan, I just wanted to thank you for your testimony. I look forward to seeing your agency's work implemented to elevate underserved communities and bring us closer to equal opportunity uh, that we all deserve. Uh, I yield back.